This video is to explain a little bit more about multiplication and division equations. The two equations I have here are uh, one is solved using multiplication and one is solved using division. You have to be careful because when we talk about what property solves this equation, what property is being used to solve this equation, that's an inverse operation that you use to get x by itself. So when we look at these two equations, this is 2 times x equals 10, but multiplication is not what we're going to do to get x by itself. If we're trying to solve for x, that means we want to know what x equals, and we do the inverse of 2 times x. The inverse of multiplication is division. 2 divided by 2 is 1 and anything times 1 is itself. So 1x is the same as x. What you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Does my answer make sense? Yes, because 2 times 5 does in fact equal 10. I know that's a very simple example, but what inverse operation did we use to solve this equation? We used division right here. All right, and if we're looking at this other example, x divided by 2 equals 10. Again, we're trying to solve for x. What's happening to the x? It's being divided by 2. The inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2 over 1 times x over 2 is 2x over 2. And 2 divided by 2 leaves me with 1 and 1x is equal to x. So that inverse operation of multiplying is what canceled out the division. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. 10 times 2 is 20. Does my answer make sense? Yes, because 20 divided by 2 does in fact equal 10. So x equals 20, and we multiplied to solve for x. Let's look at some other examples. What is the value of x in this equation? If you want to leave your equation with x on the right hand side you can or you can reverse the two sides and make that negative x over 84 is equal to negative 6 sevenths. It's just a matter of preference. You're solving for x. I'm going to highlight the x or circle the x because that's what I want to isolate, meaning I want my final answer to be in the form of x equals. So I want x by itself. You need to think, okay, well, what are we doing to x here? x is being divided by 84, but we have a negative and a negative times a negative is a positive. Notice I don't want the negative sign left with the x. So I'm going to, since the inverse operation of division is multiplication, I'm going to multiply by negative 84. So you can't forget about the signs. I know you're learning new information with inverse operations, but we also have to remember about our signs as well. A negative times a negative is a positive, and we do want our x value to be positive. What we do to one side, we have to do to the other side, so I need to multiply this side by negative 84 as well. So multiplying by negative 84, a negative 84 on the top and a negative 84 on the bottom cancels, leaving me with just x. A negative times a negative is a positive. Over here, a negative times a negative is going to be positive 6 over 7 times 84 over 1. I have two options. I could multiply straight across and then divide by 7. So I could do 6 times 84 and then divide by 7. 6 times 84 is 504 and then divide by 7 is 72. Or I could cross simplify because 7 and 84 are both divisible by 7. 
7 divided by 7 is 1. 84 divided by 7 is 12. And then I would just be left with 6 times 12, which is also 72. So the value of x in this problem is positive 72. Does that make sense? When I put the exact value of x for x, I'm left with negative 72 over 84. Does that equal negative 6 sevenths? Yes, because if we divide the top and the bottom by 12, we'll see that those two fractions are equal. So our answer works when we plug it back in. Okay, here's another example. What property was applied to solve the equation? So look at the given equation. Despite what they're showing here, you know that this equation has 0.36 times x. What property do I use to solve the equation? I have to divide by 0.36, and that's what they show right here. Divide both sides by 0.36 to get x by itself. So the property here would be division or the quotient property because you're dividing both sides by a number to get x by itself. Here's another example. So it's asking what was this person's error when solving the equation. So when we look, we want to isolate or solve for x. So here's my x. Again, I'm not, I'm not even going to look at what's below. I'm just going to think, how would I solve for x? Based on what we just talked about, we had another example, example very similar to this. So I would solve for x, negative x divided by 420. So if I am dividing by 420, then I need to multiply by negative 420. Why a negative? Because a negative times a negative is a positive, and we want my x value to be positive. So did they do that? No, they didn't multiply by a negative. So they would still be left with a negative x right there equals. And then I would have to do the math to see what 5 over 12 times 420 is. 420 over 1. I can cross simplify because both of these numbers are divisible by 12 and that is 35 and then when I multiply by 5 I do get 175 so they did multiply correctly and they did use the multiplication property of equality but they did not address that negative sign right now so the way their answer should read if they followed the steps that they did is they would still have negative x equals 175 and we would need to divide by that negative 1 to see that x equals negative 175. That would be the correct answer. They did not have the correct answer. And one more example in setting up an equation. So which equation or how would you set up an equation? If Evelyn bought 8.4 gallons of gasoline for $23.94. So you always want to identify a total. Because if you identify a total amount of miles, a total amount of money, you know that you can set it equal to the total. And the thing here is you're not just trying to solve the problem. You're not seeing what operation would I use to solve you're seeing how would I set the equation up to model the problem. So when you think, how am I going to solve it, that's the inverse operation that would lead you to solving the equation that you write. So this is my total amount of money. We don't know the price of each gallon, but we do know how many gallons. So when, when you go to buy gas, you've got some price of each gallon times the number of gallons you purchase to get the total amount of money. So that would be the equation that I'm looking for, where I take 
the price of each gallon times the number of gallons I purchase. And again, the key here is to set it equal to the total amount of money. Hope that helps. Thank you.